Yes guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the George Benson Football Channel for your penultimate Chelsea match preview of the season. It's actually kind of sad really that we've got smiles on our faces consistently at the moment. I'd say like we're at an 80% smile rate at the moment. At least I am. I'm optimistic for the future. I'm happy with the current results. Even the manager is making me smile at the moment, which is great news. The other 20% is the fact that, well, we're not going to have Champions League football next season. There is still a lot of work to be done this season, so I'm a bit nervous, but I'm so excited to watch Chelsea play again. We've got Brighton tonight in the Premier League. Last night, let's talk a little bit about that for a second. Spurs just did what we all expected them to do, really. They fell apart. Son misses a one-on-one. -on -one. Hoybjerg decides he doesn't want to defend. It's funny how the two obvious errors are from two of Spurs' more prominent players. I actually don't think they gave a shit about that game last night. There is no Champions League football for Tottenham. And there is a world here where Ange Postacoglu has kicked up a bit of a fuss after this game. Rightly so. He said about how Spurs, there's a lot more work that needs to be done. There's a lot of lights that have been shone on things that he didn't quite expect. So Sheffield United, this is where we go into the Chelsea conversation here. Sheffield United did okay against us at home. There is no reason why Spurs don't go to Bramall Lane and get beat. It would be the most Spurs thing we've ever seen. So for Chelsea... There is an outside chance here that we beat Brighton tonight and then we get another win against Bournemouth at home in the last game of the season. We could still finish fifth in the Premier League. Absolutely mind-blowing. You'd have never thought that. And if that was to be the case, then it's going to literally feel like we've won something if that happens on the final day of the season. But tonight we go to Brighton and this is not going to be easy. Roberto De Zerbi's side, they've kind of found a little bit of form again towards the end of the season. They've been very inconsistent this year, had European football to worry about as well. And I think that there is obviously these days, there is a bit of animosity between more so from Brighton towards us, but Chelsea fans may also think, well, they've absolutely rinsed us for Graham Potter, Cucurella, Caicedo, but these players are starting to come good now and we don't really care anymore about Graham Potter. So I think this game will mean something to Brighton more so than it would to Chelsea in the rivalry sense because, well, they want to get one over us to show that they've got all this money from us, yet they're still better than us. They're just not, though. Do you know what I mean? They never will be. That is the truth and the facts of the bloody pudding. So, Pochettino in his press conference. To me, I was enjoying this press conference, you know. Watching Maurizio Pochettino, he's kind of still got this, like, sarcastic side to him that we've not really seen all season. I think he can see, even though obviously like a lot of the blame has to go on a manager, when you don't quite get tunes out of players on too often and of an occasion, if you're a music artist and your sound designer keeps screwing it up every show, you get a new one. It's kind of the same when it comes to a football team. If you keep getting beat in games that mean something to you and you don't see fight and you don't see enough like tactical stuff, systems, that's why we've been frustrated too often this season with Poch. But... Chelsea are finding form at just the right moment. And in a Premier League season where even Liverpool couldn't last the title race, Aston Villa have just scraped through into the top four, which credit to them, they've done well. But outside of Arsenal and Man City, it has been a very competitive Premier League. But I would say in terms of quality, it's at a pretty low point right now. So for Chelsea to have had such a bad season in the eyes of many of us, for us to still be in with a chance of finishing fifth at this point is pretty amazing, to be fair. Pochettino, very lighthearted. People are bringing up the, the facts that Chelsea, since Boxing Day, I think, would actually be in the top four, and he was clapping, which I actually like that. I think there's also a very poignant moment within this press conference where Pochettino is saying how he could have literally come and after three games be smacking the badge Kissing the badge. This is this is not a Man United shirt. It's a Ferrari Puma shirt. Just just in case you were wondering why it's red. And I like this from Pochettino. He's talking about how he doesn't want to just be given respect by Chelsea fans or given love without earning it. And I actually respect this comment massively. I think in terms of Pochettino warming to the fans on the whole, there's a lot of people that are still supporting him. I am supporting him as of right now. Of course, I've said that many times in recent videos, but in terms of that affinity and that love that you get for a manager or a manager will have respectively back towards the club and its fans, 
I think Pochettino isn't beating around the bush. He understands that it's obviously with the Tottenham history and the history of Chelsea and the fact that we are used to winning trophies. And if it's not winning trophies, then is it a success? I love that Pochettino gets this. I love that Pochettino sees it this way because that is the right way to do it. If Chelsea are going to be content with not winning trophies and getting Europa League every season, then of course, as fans, it's a bit like, we're constantly hung over from the Abramovich era. Can we ever like reach those heights of before when it comes to excitement, enjoyment, belief? I think we know that for Chelsea to be successful, you've got to be lifting trophies. There's got to be medals around those players' necks and it needs to be better. And I think Poch gets it and I think the players are reciprocating that understanding. It's taken a long time but I really think Chelsea, going into this match tonight at Brighton, the game at Bournemouth at home, there is such an opportunity here that we can finish this season as the most informed team in the Premier League. Yes, City are going to win it. City win everything. Like, we've got to detach ourselves from that right now and understand that the steps that we are taking, they may be small. We might not win the league next year, but I absolutely think with Klopp gone at Liverpool with the way that you look at the Premier League this season, there's not many clubs that are actually that good. So I think there is a massive opportunity for Chelsea to build on this end of season success going into next season. Poch is also talking about how he's planning for next season, which is interesting. There's obviously sales of players that need to happen. There are players that he wants to bring in to boost the squad and the first team. And I think we're in a really good place. And in terms of that, excitement. It's taken me 36 Premier League games this season to actually wake up in the morning and be like, yes, Chelsea are playing today. That's where I'm at right now. If you agree with me, smack a like on this video. You guys have been going mad with the support and subscribe to the George Benson Football Channel if you are new around here and haven't already done so. When it comes to building this Chelsea starting 11 that we're going to do right now, I was thinking a lot about this and I've made a couple of changes. I think I've actually... I think I've made one or two. Let me get it up on my screen. Because I do believe there is... I'm going to just say, first of all, Petrovic is the goalkeeper. We can move on from that. I think Petrovic is having a good season. The back four. I want to talk about this right now. Gusto, I'm starting for this game. Chalaba, Badia Shiel, Cucurella. I know, Thiago Silva, like, he's only got two games left at Chelsea. But I've, I just... I have a feeling that against Brighton... Pochettino is going to want more defenders and players out there that are willing to defend on the front foot. Badia Shield is a front foot defender. Chalaba absolutely steps up. Gusto, obviously we know. Cucurella has become an inverted left midfielder. So, as much as we saw Cucurella kind of reverted back to being a conventional left back against Forrest at times, there is a dilemma here that Pochettino has to make the right call for. Keep on inverting Mark Cucurella and I think Chelsea will get results. It's going to be, if we do play that way, it will be easier to play against Brighton than it was to play against Forest because Forest are going to sit back and be compact and tight, whereas Brighton are going to try and play football. Or they might not, depending on how De Zerbi wants it to be. But we've seen with Brighton this season, they will concede goals. And I think the way that this Chelsea team are playing, particularly starting all the way from the back, I think we can slice through this Brighton team like flipping knife through butter. I think we can go out there tonight and destroy them. That's what I'm believing. Malo Gusto, we know how good he is. Reese James is obviously fit. Pochettino in his press conference was also saying how important it is right now when asked about if Reese James can go to the Euros. It's about managing minutes, and I fully agree with this statement. I think with Reese, it has always been a case of he comes back, we see how brilliant he is, and it lasts for such a smidgen of time that we're just like, Fuck. now he's had the surgery. Hopefully this isn't the case, but let's give him, if we can, half an hour tonight at the Amex, and then hopefully we could see him maybe start the final game of the season at home to Bournemouth, and that would be the celebration for Thiago Silva. I just think with Silva, obviously having played at the weekend, he'd not long ago recovered from a knock of his own. I do think with what we've planned, what the Chelsea fans have planned for Silva pre-match against Bournemouth, I think it makes sense if he doesn't start tonight. And I just think in terms of like the way that Chelsea should be looking to play, I think Trev and Badia Shield maybe suit that style a little bit more. 
We move into what I have coined the pivot of dreams towards the end of this season. Moises Caicedo and Conor Gallagher. We spoke yesterday. If you want to check out yesterday's video, I think it was a good video where I was discussing Enzo Fernandez comments this week and the future for Enzo Fernandez in this Chelsea team. And of course, another thing we've got to look at here is I know it's taken us all the way to the end of the season, but for this Brighton game, Chelsea only have four players unavailable. Sanchez, Fafana, Lavia, and who's the other bloke who's not available for this game? I, I can't remember. It's just completely bypassed. Enzo, that, the man we're talking about. Benson, have a sip of coffee, mate. Four injuries. That's all we got. Four flipping injuries for this game. It's a headache for Pochettino, but at the same time, it's important that we don't rush players back, especially when we're playing well, we're looking good. The question is, how many changes should we make before we start to think about continuity is important, yes, but it's also at this point of the season, you've got Sterling coming on and playing really well against Nottingham Forest, but Mudrik, who probably didn't play well after his goal, has become so important for the team, and I think it's the fact that he has started five in a row makes Mudrik important for the growth of him and his presence in the team. So, my front four, I did go initially with Sterling, Palmer, Mudrik, Jackson, and then I've changed my mind. I think it worked seeing Sterling come off the bench to great effect in that away game at Forest, and I think we should see that again. So, I'm keeping Noni Madweki on the right, Cole Palmer, Mudrik and Jackson. We have seen these four players do such a good job together towards the end of this season. I know that Christopher Nkunku is also fit. Kane Chukwameka is also back. These are players that I'm desperate to see. But I think that this is, of the two fixtures we've got left, I know that Bournemouth are doing so well. Iriola's just signed a new contract. So if we're looking forward to that game, that's not going to be easy. And I'd argue that maybe Bournemouth have actually been a better side than Brighton for the majority of the second half of this season. But the fact this is a way... Brighton are going to be up for it because they always want to get one over Chelsea to say, you can't steal everything and we're, we're still going to, you know what I mean? You get it? That's the narrative their side, potentially. So I'm just going to go with continuity here. I think it's so important that we actually go out there and give the players the, the credit they deserve. Madweki may not have been great in that game at Forest. I think he was probably the worst player on the pitch for us. But it was also harder because Forest were playing in a way that other teams weren't playing like in the build-up to this where Madweki was doing good. So having one bad game doesn't mean you're a bad player. And I think I've also come to learn that towards the end of this season, that I have been very much like definitive on the way that I've been judging players, the way that I've been talking about players on videos. This is a young squad. Pochettino doesn't want us to keep using the excuse of how young this squad is, but it has been the narrative of the season. Chelsea have been injury riddled with the youngest squad in the league. And now we're fully focused, as Poch is saying, on being positive, moving forward. And I think that Pochettino will back the players that have been the reason for this turn of form. And Noni Madweki is one of them. So that is my Chelsea starting 11. The bench, it's looking floppy. It's looking brilliant now. After a few weeks ago, we're like, we don't even know how to flip in. Don't, I've never even heard of half the players that are on the Chelsea bench. Well, I had, but it's just a figure of speech, an exaggeration. Score prediction. I think we win this game 3-1. I think we're going to go to Brighton, put serious pressure on Tottenham, and Newcastle play Man United tonight as well. So we could learn a lot about what is going to happen with Poch. We could learn a lot about what we're doing in Europe next season. And we have just got to do our job here. Beat Brighton beat Bournemouth, and we will have the best finish that was in our hands since that Arsenal defeat. Great stuff from Chelsea. Excited by the Poch interview as well. I'm really looking forward to this game. Let me know your score predictions, Chelsea 11s, in the comments down below. And I will catch you at full time for six things we learned from Brighton versus Chelsea. So make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you there.